What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Steve Basic. The Build Show's on the road today. We're outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Steve, this is a house that you designed. What are we yes, talking sir. about today? So we are gonna talk about something I've never done before from new construction. Okay. I've done it on a lot of retrofits. You might've heard the term chainsaw retrofit. Yep. This is kind of a modification of how do we bring that chainsaw ref retrofit to new construction. Yeah, so we're talking about monopoly framing, which we've got here and what I did at my house. And we're gonna go through some details on Zip R on this video as well, how to really detail it correctly. Yeah. Sound like a plan? Yeah, it does. And you know, one of the slight differences here, your house was a low slope roof. We're here in New England. We got a little steeper slope, yeah. so we can change that detail just a little bit. We've got a lot of good details, guys. Today's build show all about monopoly framing and Zip R details. Let's get going. All right, so we brought Josh into the frame here. Josh is the homeowner, but he's not your typical homeowner. He is um, a, maybe a typical client for me. One of the beauties of the clients that I attract is that they want to do really good things, but then they're always asking questions. Well, okay, so we have that solution, but if, what if we wanted to do a little bit more? And so in our interaction here in the design phase, working with Josh, him asking questions, we came up with a fully applied detail where we're going to apply the eave and soffit work after we're satisfied with total air barrier continuity. Love it. Yep. So Josh, let me uh, ask you, you've seen a bunch of Steve and I's videos. Uh, and put a lot of our work into practice That's on right. your own build. And Josh, you're a unique builder in that you have an engineering degree. Uh, you have a whole career outside of building and built, decided to build a house yourself. You're yes. the GC. You're also self-performing a lot of the work. Right. How do you explain to somebody who doesn't know what monopoly framing is? How do you explain what you're doing here for monopoly framing? It's the, it, it's the wall framing technique that allows you to get the best air barrier uh, continuity um, and avoiding having to block out every single individual rafter. Uh, with this house, uh, it's a single story, uh, it's a large footprint, it's about 3,100 square feet. So I knew that we were gonna have a lot of rafters yep. and I didn't want to rely on every single one of those rafter connections and those, that blocking technique to be uh, as effective as it would be with this approach. So with the Monopoly framing that I did see for the first time on your, your build. How about that? That's uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I decided that that was the approach that I wanted to use. And even though we did panelized framing, we uh -huh. still applied that same Monopoly style to this construction technique. So we were able to take kind of a different approach and yet still result with the, the intended goal of having that air tightness that we were really striving to get. I like it. And so if you look back at the house behind us, you'll see that the green zip sheeting is actually taped to the brown roof zip sheeting and there's no rafters poking through that. That's really, uh, I think you nailed it, Josh, in saying it's that continuity of air barrier. You sound like you're, you're channeling a, a Steve. You know where yeah. I got the word from. <laughs> I mean, you know, the beauty of this is if you sat down with a blank piece of paper and I gave you a red pen, my favorite color, and said, draw me the perfect air barrier, you'd draw this. You'd go up and you'd trace the roof and you'd come down and trace the wall. Without any breaks. Without any breaks. Yeah. And then you would apply all that other stuff later. I love it. Okay, then talk to me through how you're doing overhangs. Cause it looks to me like you're part way through. I'm seeing your gable has been, uh, has an overhang on it. Uh, this front wall here is, has an overhang, but the garage and this side of the house doesn't. Right. Talk me through what you're doing to, to create right. those. So all of the, the ladder rakes have been now installed and that was the first piece that needed to go on afterwards. So uh, when we were finished with the original roof truss uh, installation and sheathing, all of that was uh, not there. The, so we, we applied the ladder rakes, got those installed. Now we're building, I'm building the eaves to get to connect to those ladder rakes. Got it. Um, and once those are done, like those, those ladder rakes run long so that I can cut those once we get those to the right lengths to match the, the eave overhang. Gotcha. gotcha. Yep. So if I look at this uh, gable wall here, it looks to me like when you sheathed the roof, you ran that zip sheathing long uh, and there's not a break. But on the other hand, this section behind me here, it looks like maybe you laced it in and taped it. Am I seeing that correctly? Which piece? So on this, on this rake right here, yep. or on this gable rather, 
looks like your zip is coming out like that sheet that's on the on the bottom looks like a almost full sheet six foot by yep. uh four, yep. four foot let's say but on the front here i'm noticing you've clipped it how are you going to continue your roof sheathing down the overhang that yeah so that's what we did over here on this side so that has the eave overhang there's an 18 inch overhang for the eave to provide that umbrella uh, gotcha. right over Got that it. over those two windows yep. so that fascia the sub fascia that's installed there that's actually we're seeing the 18 inches of the eave overhang gotcha. and that was just sheathed on top and then taped across that span but that tape is just for the roofing plane it's not for air tightness in the house it's for water with the roof uh, being able to allow water to sheet off that way got it and you framed a bunch of those yourself, right? How did I'm you frame doing those, those? Yeah, yeah. I, I've uh, I rented a, a a boom lift to be able to get up and down. And um, and are you pre-building those ladder framing on the ground? And then the ladders actually came with the panelized walls. Oh, okay. And so the ladder rakes were were ready to go. Ready yeah, to go. yeah. And I'm just installing them. But again, trying to do a 12 12 pitch roof with ladder rakes that are pretty heavy. Those are yeah. six six inch uh, sub fascia framing. So yeah. they're heavy. I wasn't trying to do that on a ladder. I used a boom lift, got them into place, used uh, C clamps to clamp it to the roof sheathing and then anchored it into the wall studs and life goes on. There you go, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I love it. Now Steve, talk to me about the zip R that we're seeing behind here. Cause I'm noticing that it looks like you've added maybe a two by two to the bottom or something to drop it onto. Talk me through those details. Yeah, so that's our standard treated extended sill detail. And in this case here, because we did superior wall, the anchor bolts are a little more forward into the system. So these are actually treated two by 12 plates. Oh, wow. That they go down and they go in and they're anchored to that superior wall on the inside, but then they come and they're set so that they flush mount with the uh, inch and 15 sixteenths zip R9 on the outside. So it's just shy of two inches. Just shy of two inches. Gotcha. Yep. And why are you doing that? What's the benefit of doing that? Uh, well, it's susceptible foam, right? It's at the risk of rodents turning it into a hotel. It's easy to chew. It's nice and warm, nice and dry. Um, but you also want to be able to flash that and, and have a hard surface that you can then flash as well as turn the corner and make that airtight attachment. I mean, we did a beautiful job up there now the continuity detail becomes as i come down the wall how do i attach the wall to the foundation system which i'm going to ask you about josh what is your detail there you're going to be doing that yourself as a one-man band <laughs> yeah uh how do you detail because that you know you did such a great job of air sealing where the wall meets the roof how about where the walls meet the foundation what do you, what's your plan there was a couple of pieces there one was steve's detail on uh really getting a good mud seal um sealant so uh, on top of the superior walls, um, I used Lexel with, uh, I still use sill foam as a capillary break, even though the Lexel, it's, the Lexel doesn't cover the entire piece, the yep. sill foam does. Gotcha. So the Lexel plugs any of those gaps, gives you a nice seal there. Um, two pieces of two by treated material uh, go on top of the foundation wall. The bottom one is to overhang the second one is to allow your shear nailing for the panel that comes over that right, edge. Right. So you have to have both. So it's a double bottom plate, in other it's words. It's a double bottom plate yeah. all the way around the house. And two by 12 on the very bottom and then two, two by, by two by 10 next. Two by 10 next. Gotcha. Yep. And that kind of creates that little cove for that wall panel to sit down into that zip R9 panel to drop down into. Got it. So you can nail it off, but then you have a nice flush surface that you can do your capillary or your, your uh, continuity with your air barrier and water barrier there. Got it. Um, so that detail, the superior walls has a, like a broomed finish mm -hmm. on, on as a texture. So what I'm using is a, a, a two-part solution for uh, what I'm doing there. Um, I'm using Sega um, tape mm -hmm. for from the wall to across the the PT, the lower sill, mm -hmm. and then wrapping that corner. And then I'm using a secondary piece um, to go from that bottom onto the wall. But because the texture of that superior wall doesn't allow the tape to have a really airtight bite. I'm using a bed of Meltel um, that will be a strip that runs along be at the intersection between the foundation and the bottom of the, uh, the sill to, to uh, allow that tape to have a good place to be able to have airtight. So it sounds like you're using four inch Ventrum, two different uh, tapes to kind of overlap each other. And then Meltel is basically a fluid applied flashing, right. which I think is really smart to get your tape to embed into that textured surface. Why not do the thicker? Like Sega makes a, what, an eight or a nine, nine inch, inch tape. Yeah. Why not do that? Yeah, the, for me, just being a one person installer, it would be tough to kind of manhandle that 
that wide of a piece of tape and have it exactly where I wanted it to be. Got it. So going with two pieces allows me to kind of focus on each one of those in a more manageable size okay. and get them exactly where I need to without it being fussy or potentially getting really kind of out of whack as I try and wrap two different surfaces. Makes a lot of sense. Steve, talk to me about the window openings and maintaining air barrier, water barrier continuity with the zip bar. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, these here, these aren't lined yet with the liners. Um, what so, do you mean by liners? So the, what I mean by liners, if you remember in days past where we would use house wraps, I mean, some people are still using it, but you would slice the house wrap and you would simply fold it into the corner. Yep. Because that way there, then you have some kind of lateral attachment to maintain air barrier continuity, water management, thermal continuity, all of that stuff. And so using the Zip R9 coming to that rough frame, we need to develop that continuity. So we oversize the rough opening by one inch beyond the one inch rough opening. So it's plus two. And that allows us to take seven sixteenths and line the jam liners in the head ah. on the inside. And now we simply tape that and it's literally we've taken what you're looking at is the green weather resistive barrier here and simply folded it into that rough opening. I actually showed that on the inside. Let's cut to the clip of me showing that on the inside of the house. You can see on this door opening here, the zip sheathing hasn't been run on the inside, but the rest of the windows and doors have the zip running to the inside. Now we can see why they're doing that. The zip bar sheathing on the outside of the house, two inches thick, then he's got two by six framing on the inside you would have that insulation here and you wouldn't have a continuous air and water barrier. So by running that zip into this opening here and taping this uh, joint on the zip, we're covering over this insulation, we're giving a nailing flange, and we're also making that continuity uh, of those two layers to the inside of the house. And then once that was in on the inside, then how did you finish off the detailing to make that, that window opening both water and air tight? Yeah, so that's probably one of the things that I have taken the most pride in. Uh, and it was from the details that you, you know, that we've talked about and that you've put out there for a long time. Um, use two products, zip products, the zip flashing tape uh, and the zip stretch, stretch tape. Yeah. I went with a full uh, zip stretch for the sill. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that there, we were looking at it earlier, uh, water can just sit on that sill forever. I, I don't care. It's it's literally wrapped yeah. up both sides. It's up over an, a, a, a back dam and it runs over the gap between the sill and the sheathing. Yep. If the water's, it, it dries in place, it runs over, I don't care. It's never gonna go anywhere because there's nothing that's gonna penetrate that sill tape, that stretch tape. So once that was applied, um, I used zip flashing tape on, um, sorry, use zip, zip stretch tape on the top corners, okay. folded that out and gotcha. then did flashing tape across the top and along the sides. And then that maintained that air continuity barrier from, from inside to outside. Gentlemen, this house is super impressive. And by the way, Steve has made at least four or five, <laughs> maybe even six videos over here uh, on all kinds of different systems from the framing to the foundation. Josh, you're killing it, man. Thank you. Also fascinating that Josh is a GC who is uh, normally an engineer, but now building his own house, also doing a one-man install. Stay tuned for our next video where Josh is gonna show you a couple details that absolutely blew my mind on how to do a window install solo, including some of these like 600 pound Shuko uh, windows from European Architectural Supply literally by himself and he is not steve size right <laughs> steve could probably install a 600 pound window by himself but you and i cannot no. so we got some great details to show you on the next video in the meantime go follow steve on instagram at steven basic architect go check out his videos on the buildshow.com incredible work i gotta shake your hand man this is impressive <laughs> thanks man very okay. impressive very impressive if you're not currently a subscriber hit that subscribe button below you know how i end my videos right Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Show.